Hello everyone, welcome back to my Annotate With Me series. Today I'm annotating Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. I'm on chapter 5. I'm reading this book for a book club, so that's why I've chosen to go quite in-depth with this annotation and also why I've chosen to record it. But remember that my main, I guess, philosophy you could say when it comes to annotation is to personalize it and do not do this much work for every book you read because it is, quite frankly, exhausting. It's really fun. It's great for when you're taking a book slow, but if you're just trying to read a book, this is a lot of work. Anyway, that being said, we can take a look at what I'm doing here on the first two pages. I'm underlining things that are interesting. I'm bracketing this whole first paragraph because it was extremely convoluted and had a lot of proper nouns, so I bracketed some of those and wrote that I should return to this page once I've read more of the book because Rushdie does tend to skip ahead in the plot, kind of give us flash forwards and flashbacks, and that's something I love about this book in the narrative, but it's also incredibly confusing at times. So I like to make notes of places where I'd like to return because I've been given essentially a huge amount of plot all at once and it's too much to digest without much knowledge. You just saw me add a tab that was purple. These tabs represent anything to do with women, femininity, um, yeah, basically the role of women in this novel. It's something that I've been paying a lot of attention to and that comes up a lot. So any time that I feel like there's a very powerful scene relating to women or something, some interesting kind of commentary relating to the woman's role in India at this time, I will put that purple tab. I also put a blue tab. That is a tab for basically East versus West, India versus Europe. That's a huge theme in this novel and I'm really excited to see how it develops. But for now, any part of the book that includes some kind of tension between those two forces and kind of cultural differences, I will put a tab. Um, I've put a little heart on this passage that I really liked. I'm also circling words that I don't know, whether they be in English or Hindi. Um, it really helps that the person I'm doing this book club with is from India and has a much more profound knowledge of Indian culture and obviously various Indian languages. Um, so yeah, I, you'll see me later in this, in this um, session looking up some of these words, but I will also be discussing a lot of these words later in my book club, so that's exciting for me, especially as a lover of languages. Um, let's see what else I'm writing right now. I sometimes write MR, short for Magical Realism. Um, there's a ton of magical realism in this book, and that's one of my absolute favorite, I think you could call it a genre, if not a genre, then some kind of literary device. It, I don't know, it, it excites my imagination in a way that, I guess, normal realism wouldn't, or even fantasy wouldn't. Um, I actually meant to tab that pink instead of green, I fixed it later, and... Sometimes I don't put tabs, even though I see a theme, I'll just write it down. I really couldn't tell you why. I just, when I really feel like the theme is strong enough, I'll put the tab, I guess. But if I feel like it's just a hint, let's say, of magical realism, I might not tab it. But that's a personal preference thing. So yeah, underlining lines that stand out to me, circling words I don't know. I'm also bracketing or underlining. Again, the decision to bracket or underline is really arbitrary. It would be hard for me to explain, but I I do that for proper nouns, things that I might want to come back to, really important plot points I might want to remember. Also, I'm using a straight edge sometimes to underline and sometimes not. Sometimes it's about convenience. If I want to make a really nice looking straight line, I'll use the straight edge, but I was actually struggling. Um, to annotate neatly while I was recording because the angle I had the camera set up at made it difficult. So sometimes I just chose not to use the straight edge. Um, the jury is still out on which looks better. I'm always back and forth between the two. Does it look nice, kind of messy, or does it look nice, neater? Who knows? But I kind of went messy for this, this chapter. Um, I'm writing a lot of notes. Most of them are reactions to the text, like usual. Sometimes it's perhaps a little bit deeper. Um, if you're interested, you can look very closely at what my annotations are, but to be honest, it's going quite fast, so I can't read them that easily. I just used another green tab. So the green tabs actually relate to either partition or um, the conflict between religions, Hinduism and Islam, which is another major theme in this novel. Um, so yeah, 
that's what the green ones are. And then the orange tabs are whenever a passage reminds me a lot of 100 Years of Solitude, which is my favorite book. And um, Rushdie has said that that book was an inspiration for Midnight's Children, and I can definitely see the passages where there's a ton of similarities. I'm also really excited to just read more of the genre because I have a feeling that that kind of 100 Years of Solitude vibe that I love so much does appear in other works of magical realism, which I can't wait to read. I marked another MR on the left-hand side here. Um, made a comment, let's see, about... Yeah, I was making connections within the book here in the text. I wrote, like the nose, which makes no sense if you haven't read the book, or even if you have read the book, that note probably makes very little sense. Um, but yeah, making a connection to something I thought of that reminded me, um, sorry, making a connection about something that I was reminded of earlier in the book, that sentence made very little sense, but I think, I think the meaning was there. I just added actually a new color tab to my key, my tab key, which is at the front inside cover of the book. I added a dark blue tab to represent what I'm calling Indianness. Um, the narrator of this novel Salim, he he comments, he's, a, he's breaking the fourth wall a lot in this novel, and he comments about, is there a, is there some kind of Indianness at the core of, of all of India, of all of the people living there? Are there things that we, not we including me, but from his point of view, are there things that we all do as Indians and that define us? And he kind of ruminates about this out loud or on the paper, and I thought it was interesting to hear, to, to mark these places where he's doing that with the new tab color because I didn't really, I saw a pattern developing. I'm what, a hundred pages in? I saw this new pattern developing and I decided it was worth worthwhile to start marking it. I've used a star over here to mark a really important looking passage. I also used another color tab. This chapter was full of different um, themes more than the previous chapters. I tabbed a light kind of beige color for fate and prophecy, which I've definitely noticed as a theme um, along with the time jumps in the nonlinear time. There's a lot of mentions of fate within the family and what will happen. Um, a couple seconds ago, I just took out my iPad. I actually finished the chapter and I started researching some of the circled words. So basically, most of them are, some of them are English words, but most of them are not. I'm looking them up. I'm getting a visual if that is uh, applicable to the situation. I think we're about to see some Google images of, yeah, some blinds that I didn't know what they looked like. Um, there's a drum that I looked up. There's some food that I looked up. It's always nice to have a visual. So when I have the time to, I'll look up words that I don't know. Then I got <laughs> kind of sucked down a Wikipedia rabbit hole here. You can see me clicking through pages about uh, Delhi, Old Delhi, Central Delhi, um, New Delhi, all of that. Um, and I think there's one more, yes, there's one more tab that I didn't mention yet, and that's the tab of lineage. Lineage and inheritance is a theme that I've noticed because it's a multi-generational story, another one of my favorites. Um, the The idea of passing something to the next generation or the cycles of a family, the repetition of a family, which is so 100 years of solitude, how, to, how family patterns and how history repeats itself. Um, whenever I notice that, I tab that as well. So those are all my tabs. There are eight so far in total, which is a lot. And right now I'm finishing up doing some research, historical research, because this novel is set right, um, right during India's partition. So there's a lot of historical background that I'm honestly not too familiar with that I like to look up as it comes up. And then the last thing I did, this is about an hour after reading this chapter, was find all the places in the chapter where I could have added, or sorry, in the book, where I could have added that new tab. So this is a little time consuming. This is kind of, um, let's say, this was kind of obsessive of me to do this, but I did go back through the whole book to find these, these new tabs, or these places where I could add these tabs. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope this was insightful or useful or entertaining. Um, and I hope this inspires you to think deeply about what you're reading, and especially if it's for some kind of book club or class. 
I hope to make more videos like this. I'm really excited to be returning to YouTube. Thank you for all the really lovely comments over the past couple months. I've read them all and I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.